yeah, uh, regarding, yeah, let's say the uh, teams, because I feel like one of the um, particular or the one of the very unique aspects of the hub to hub is the uh, mix road use. So both private mm -hmm. ground and public road. So I was wondering because that I think in my opinion is one of the most relevant things. Uh, I'm not sure whether that uh, fits into safety enhancement maybe, but uh, definitely I think it's one of the aspects that should be dealt with the most in this use case. So, okay. Yeah, um, I'm going to add I, this to you. So yes, um, first of all, let me let me say that at least from my perspective, um, these these themes or categories that we have on the board here are are not firmly delineated from each other. I think they they easily blend into each other, um, and and they're also to some extent. Um, it's it's very well possible to write uh, <laughs> the same comment to and attach it to several themes. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's that's perfectly possible. For example, I would personally argue that almost any safety enhancement is an efficiency enhancement or should mm -hmm. be seen as such because those are areas where you definitely do not want to uh, play one off against the other. Mm -hmm. Right, we can... Uh, Um, Guglielmo, are you able to put notes on the board, or do you have, or would you would you want me to to do that on um, your behalf? I, ju I just put one. Yeah, yeah I can. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. And I see also some people writing them in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm just going to exactly, and I'm trying my best to keep up with that process. Um, could I just have a comment? Of course, uh, anytime. Yeah, I don't, I don't have access to the chat, and I'm actually not sure where it fits in because it's difficult to uh, to zoom in the the screen. Um, I, I would like to um, to add a perspective on the job processes um, that we are not just. Uh, replacing a manual operation with an automated, but that we are mm -hmm. actually rethinking around how we actually perform the logistics. Um, yes. Yeah. It's um, difficult in the long run to free yourself from the present mindset. Absolutely. So what I would suggest to, to me, that's, um, that's a, a uh, sticky note that fits into the cost reduction theme <laughs> to some extent, because I think mm -hmm. that's how a lot of people view automation from a business case perspective. Um, whether that's whether the replacement of, of people with automation is is indeed a cost reduction or not remains to be seen and, and is heavily use case dependent. But if you don't mind, Ron, mm -hmm. I'll, be, I'll be happy to attach that there. And I also would would uh, mm -hmm. Uh, use your comment and uh, perhaps place it into the next round of this of this forum under under the uh, challenge uh, section because I think that is uh, the, the question of sort of social relations and and human uh, the human factor in automation both both from a technical and from a jobs perspective is absolutely important here and i say that as a representative of a of an organization that that represents uh workers <laughs> uh, okay. as well right yeah. so i understand that comment yeah. okay uh, the, the, there is also something that uh, when, whenever we are talking about cost reductions is cost reductions to whom and exactly uh, and and since the the whole market is very let's say um separated and subcontracted so you have large fleet owners who have one of uh, part of fleets which are their own they might have own drivers then you have a subcontracting um contract contracting parties which are then just doing the let's say the transportation work yeah. and uh, i think the auto automation would be first tapping into the separation of a driver and the vehicle even before anything else happens so yep. so therefore i mean now they are one unit 
the the um, purchaser of the use or the user of the transportation service is just wanting to have a transportation service so that's a driver and a, and a vehicle but if you are able to change the vehicle and the driver uh, then fleet owners can now do it would it be dhl dhl or amazon or whoever the larger ones that own the fleet but for european market i think most of the transportation work is done by companies which own average five vehicles mm -hmm. so that's going to be effective a lot And Yoni, just to make sure you're able to to uh, add things in the chat, right? Because I've seen a comment from you. No, 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 uh, I don't. So that's why I'm I'm talking okay. and, and uh, sending the information to chat because uh, yep. I don't no, know. No, that's what I mean. Like that's we where ran I can out see of it. licenses. Yeah. yeah. So the separation of driver and vehicle. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start putting that into the safety enhancement, but ultimately I think that's also a question that applies it's a to the question. To exactly, it applies to the other. Um, to the cost reduction strategy as well. Uh, Stephanie, I have a question for you. Yes, yes, just shoot. Okay. Yeah, so you, you're also not able to uh, place items on the sticky board? I am not on... able to put them okay. yeah, on the sticky board. I'm sorry. Sorry about that, but I'm I'm going to take your, your comments in the chat and place them on the... Uh, Perfect. ...on the board for you. Thank you, Holger. Sure. It's literally the very least I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Just a short comment, uh, Holger. I assume you have the initials HL on the board. Seems yes. that uh, your stickies are not public. No, not That's yet. I will make them public because uh, <laughs> part of the reason is very simple. I'm operating with a French. I'm. I'm a, my organization has given me a laptop with a French keyboard. Pity you. Um, <laughs> which I still find a bit of a nightmare to operate. So as soon as I have, so as soon as I can be somewhat sure that my sticky notes are not filled with typing typos and spelling errors, I will make them public. OK, then I understand. Thank you. <laughs> Which is right now, as a matter of fact. So you should see a few of them. Uh, Runhild, I see a comment from you in the chat that says automated charging at terminals. Where would you like me to put that? I think it would be operational efficiency. Okay, no problem. I think it's a part of the automated uh, access. Yes. Uh, you're you're hitting a nerve there with me because I'm also involved in the Zephyrus project on zero emission yeah. vehicles, and anyone who's involved in that world knows that we're dealing with a bit of a challenge in terms of the charging and fueling infrastructure. Yeah, we will actually rely on Zephyrus to our challenges. So please uh, make it work. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> <clears throat> it's good we can join forces in in some yes be, be happy to uh this is i think this will this will keep us occupied for quite some time <laughs> yeah. well i really i'm really happy to see all the activity here on the board I think I think as we're doing this, it might be useful to perhaps slowly segue into the uh, 
into the the second step here, which is which is to identify uh, both uh, supports or I guess you could call them enablers of this vision, and then also some of the challenges or obstacles. And and I think some of the sticky notes that we have in the first part of of our uh, section here could possibly also then apply uh, elsewhere. So for example, and again, this this warms my heart. I see a sticker under challenges that says regulatory framework alignment. Um, you know, IRU is an organization that does advocacy at the EU level. So yes, that is a big uh, big issue for us. Um, may I ask if the, the the numbering on the board one to five is that of any importance or it's uh, sort of it's this will um, this is sort of the the third step in this process but again it, it's never too early to start thinking about it now um, these these represent these five steps represent kind of a prioritization system okay. of yeah. of what we think is is needed um, to fulfill this vision. So out of the out of the supports and challenges, I think we can develop we can then develop the five most urgent steps we need to take uh, in order to achieve a, a seamless uh, hub to hub uh, freight transport system. OK. Uh, Yoni, quick question. You mentioned an, an ISO standard here. Is that a is that a support enabler? Do, do I understand that correctly? Yeah, that... there are two ISO yeah. standards now now being published, mm -hmm. and uh, these yeah. are driving the Type Two uh, automated driving, yeah. which means that uh, which I wrote on on the step by step autonomy. If we are now talking about the hub-to-hub -hub systems, the hubs, in my view, would be type one, where the infrastructure or the hub itself is conducting the decisions and the safety and so forth. And that's going to be first because the legislation on local level is uh, possible. Yeah. And then between the hubs, the public driving would be type one, where the vehicle itself is doing the decisions and the driving and so forth. And that is uh, following them up. So, so <clears throat> the, the standardization is pushing very much uh, on the type two level, where the hubs and the uh, the, the automated charging and auto automated whatever and the uh, value added services would be there, and driven by the orchestration of of the hub itself. Great. Thank you very much. It's quite difficult to read the the stickers for us not able to enter the board. So if uh, someone could just uh, uh, paste the text, at least you know, those stickers with long text in the chat, it will be easier to. OK, yeah, to well, I, I will I will try to. Um... 
I will I can, try I can to summarize. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's difficult to uh, to zoom in. It's uh, just getting blurry if it's more than three to four words in the sticker. Okay. And, and and for right now, all I can say is it is not a problem to have several stickies with the same comment coming from different people. Um, yeah. If anything, that helps us uh, understand that we're thinking yeah. along similar lines. And that will also help us identify kind of the prioritization of what's needed as next steps then. And there, there is a bit of a problem with the stickies in the sense that, yeah, they do not support too much text. So, so for example, Yoni's comment on the step-by-step -step autonomy, I'll have to abbreviate a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. You can just um, write the summary. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll do my best. I think that's actually that's actually a comment that is worth explaining in in more detail once we get to it. So I'll just leave it here as a as a fragment and then feel free to uh, expand on it when when the time comes. Uh, Yoni, there's a comment here from you saying software terms, yard management, depot management. Um, I'm assuming that's a challenge at this point. And, uh, it was uh, a com comment to Stephanie's comment regarding oh, yeah. <laughs> software platform to integrate autonomous vehicle logistics. And then I commented that what I've seen is uh, you have yard management, you have depot management, you have yeah. transportation management, warehouse management, and automated marshalling. Okay. So, so, so uh, yeah, I, I will. <laughs> say I think stuff. I think that's a good that's a good uh, counterpoint, so to speak, in the sense that sometimes what we what we identify as an enabler can can also contain 
its own challenge and, and vice versa. Yeah, and it, it also depends on how you look at it. Look at it. If you are a uh, an operator in the yeah. terminal logistics, you would say that well, the yard is an extension of my warehouse management system. Yeah. But if you are a transportation operator, then you say that well, it's my transportation and scheduling manager. So basically, the same yeah, issue, it's, but it's, different yeah. word terms. Uh, what's that saying? Uh, where you where you stand depends on where you sit. Yeah. Okay, uh, in view of the time, we have about eight minutes left, I see. So um, what I would what I would encourage uh, everyone to do as I'm still um, as I'm still copying notes from the from the chat into the board, um, please feel free to start thinking about uh, some of the prioritization issues. I see there are quite a few cursors move around moving around in that space, so that's good. Um, Ranghil, one more, Ranghil, I had one more question here. Fallback solution with remote control at terminal site. Um, is that what you is that meant as a as a challenge or obstacle? Something to be resolved? Uh, it's a, it's a, a mitigation means or a support. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, uh, um, I'm thinking uh, at uh, at the port or terminal area where we already have these AGVs running around, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, and you are introducing automated trucks or larger vehicles in the same area. How mm -hmm. to coordinate uh, in conflicting situations, etc. How could you remote control? Uh, uh, part of the fleet to to solve challenges, for instance. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a yeah. It's it's so it's not only it's not yeah. only a fallback solution. It's it's also a way to gradually introduce the technology. Yeah. And and not overwhelm mm -hmm. uh, both people and systems. Yeah. Okay. Thank Could you. Could also be yeah. a challenge. On yes. At the gate access or yeah or possibility. Mm. Yeah. Um, I see another question in the chat that I think is well meant. <laughs> step five is is does step five represent the highest priority in this? Um, I I think we should uh, from both a visual. I didn't design this board. Uh, if if this had been my design, I would have uh, placed. Uh, I might have reversed the order here, but I think the, I think the way this is meant to go is that uh, the, uh, the the step one is is the most urgent priority, and then five is is rather the lowest. But again, I uh, I don't want to put too much emphasis on the ranking per se. I think from all the themes that we've or from all the comments that we've seen here on the board, I think more it might be just as important to figure out do we even have uh, five, if not more, to to identify as broad themes that we can prioritize.
Yes, thank you, Yoni. Please be safe. <laughs> So, for example, if if we were to uh, move a little bit more towards the uh, using these last few minutes to identify some of the some of the priorities and steps. Um, so, one thing that one thing that jumps out is is this idea of uh, standardization that has come up several times. So for example, right now we have a sticky note on step one that says global interoperability framework and on step five that says regulatory advocacy and alignment. To me, those we, we can probably discuss whether or not those are uh, complementary steps or, or something a little bit more different. Um, improved vehicle capabilities right now is emerging as a node on step one, which I think uh, fits well with uh, some of the technical discussions we've had earlier. I see some, yeah, I see open dialogue with all process stakeholders. Um, I'm, I'm very glad to see that we're thinking about uh, the issue of, of acceptance and acceptability here as well. Um, so it's not just uh, it's not just a technical challenge. It's there is a there, there is a social component to this. We have a note on I the data of, piece. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to comment that the, to me these things actually sort of go hand in hand because you're never going to discover all your technical challenges if you don't talk to the process stakeholders who are maybe currently not even aware of your efforts. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a very important point that cannot be repeated often enough. Um, we're not we're not designing black boxes here, right? This has to be uh, this has to be explainable and transparent to some to some extent, at least. Uh, at least to the extent that you're not giving away your your business uh, secrets. Uh, Ranhild, you wrote alignment between infrastructure and vehicles. Would you want me to put that on a prioritization somewhere? Uh, yes. Um, okay. I'm not sure <clears throat> in which line though. Um, but my 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 reflection is that we are often considering. The vehicles or the infrastructure separately, but it's mm -hmm. important that these work together. So, so um, one of the others were mentioning um, bringing all the stakeholders on board, and I think these two are very extremely important. That um, that we make standards which uh, allows all vehicles to drive in in all terminals or approach all terminals. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and where to where to put the sensors? Is it on the vehicles or in the infrastructure? Or yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. So a retrofitting would definitely be an an aspect, uh, at least in the early. Uh, um, adaptation phase of the technology. Yeah. Then Andreas, I saw your note and put that on on the third uh, rank here in our prioritization for best learning and certification approach. Yeah. OK, we're rapidly approaching the end of the session, so please, uh, if there's anything else you'd like me to add. Feel free to just put it in the chat on, on Teams and then I'll transfer it to the board. <laughs>